Just a reminder, you can watch full episodes on my app or join me at JoyceMeyer.org. I'll see you soon. I'm going to talk about um, the healing of a woman's soul. And, um, you know, obviously men can be wounded too, but this is a women's meeting. And so I'm sorry, guys, but you'll just have to listen to how to heal a woman's soul, and it probably will help you go home and help your wives have better lives. How many of you want your husbands to help you have a better life? Amen. All right. I've had a lot of practice with the healing of my soul, and I know a few things about it anyway. And Jesus wants us to be whole, whole, completely whole. He died not just so we could go to heaven someday, but he died so we could have a life that's worth living while we're on our way to going to heaven someday. And you know what? We've all got a story. And your story is important. And maybe you're one of the ones who could give your victory report, your testimony of what God has done for you, and maybe you're in the process of watching God do something for you. Or maybe, just maybe, you're here tonight and you just thought you had to live with it. It's amazing how many people that even are Christians and go to church I was one of them for a long time who has no idea that God is interested in anything other than just saving them and getting them to heaven. And so I lived as a broken Christian for a long, 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 long time. And I think it's, it's bad to be a pitiful sinner, but it's really bad to be a pitiful saint because we are God's advertisement to the world. We're his ambassadors and he's making an appeal to the world through us. And so it's important for your sake and also for his that if you've never done it before that you make a decision tonight that you're gonna go all the way through with God and you're gonna be everything that you can be in him and that you're not gonna live full of pain and secrets and regrets from the past, but you're gonna go all the way through and you are gonna be whole and you are gonna be happy and you are gonna be strong and you are gonna be confident and you are gonna hold your head up high and you're gonna make the devil mad every single day that you're on this planet. Amen? Psalm 147, three. He heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds, curing their pain and their sorrow. Isn't that beautiful? He heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds, curing their pain and their sorrow. Now, your soul is often referred to as your heart or your spirit, or even at times your mind. And it's really kind of some of all of that, but your soul is not your spirit, but it is the inner part of you. When you're born again, Christ comes to live in your spirit and everything is just made good in there because he has to clean it up and make it holy or he couldn't live there. So. We're all taken care of spiritually. That's why we can say and not be lying that we have things or we are things before we actually see them in reality. Like I can say I am the righteousness of God in Christ before I'm actually doing everything right because I do have it. I'm just not showing it all yet. Amen? And boy, if you can ever get a hold of that, the devil is a thief, and he's right there ready to steal every beautiful thing that God gives us if we don't stand our ground and hang on to it. So some of the things I'm going to say tonight, you may have heard me say before, but before this night's over, by the grace and the mercy of God, and it will take that, I'm going to give you 
10 points on how to have your soul completely healed. And if you follow these points, it may take some years, it may take some time, it may take some crying, it may take some going through stuff, but you will come out on the other side a whole individual with no evidence that you ever were that messed up person that you used to be. That'll be somebody that you feel like you used to know, but you're certainly not that anymore. Amen? I tell Dave, he probably feels like he's been married to 20 different women in the 50 years we've been married. <laughs> because we just keep changing and changing and changing. So, your soul is the inner part of you. And it's a part that certainly we can hide from people out here. Sometimes we even get pretty good at hiding it from ourselves. You know, I think one of the greatest things that we can do is know ourselves. I mean, really know yourself. And that takes a lifetime to really know yourself and to be honest with yourself. But certainly God knows us. And so it's very possible to look all together on the outside and yet be a complete, total mess on the inside. Has anybody gotten good at dressing it up and taking it to church and putting on your church face? But yet inside you're thinking, I am falling apart and why is this not working for me? The condition of our soul is not only felt by us, but it's also felt by all those that we are in relationship with. And to be honest, the biggest favor that you can do your family is to be a healthy you. A healthy, whole you. Where they don't have to wonder every day what version of you they're gonna get. Come on. But you, you know, Dave says, I, I remember I used to drive down the highway at night and think, I wonder what she'll be like tonight. And I didn't know either until the devil told me. I didn't know until I got up and saw what my circumstances were gonna be that way, because if they were good and I was getting everything I wanted, then I might be happy, but I had no stability in my life. And there's nothing worse than being controlled by your thoughts and your feelings and what people say or don't say or what people do or don't do, or rather you get what you want or you don't get what you want. I wanna be happy all the time, not just when my circumstances are telling me that it's okay to be happy. If the soul is wounded, we often wound other people. Many times unintentionally, many times we don't even know that we're doing it. But that's why we run into so many people in the world and we think, what is your problem? Well, they're wounded on the inside. And to be honest, sometimes instead of just wanting to get away from people like that, we might wanna take a little more time to find out what's going on inside them because probably there's somebody that's bleeding on the inside and doesn't know how to get the help that they need. So I think loosely, very loosely, we can say that our soul is our personality. It's the way we present ourselves. And so God can heal our personality. James 1.21, I love this scripture, it says, receive the word of God with meekness, because it contains the power to save your soul. It doesn't say to save you like so you can go to heaven. It says the Word of God is the healing balm that we need that will bring salvation and wholeness to this inner life, to my mind. I tell you what, my mind has been saved. Not just my spirit, my mind has been saved. When the Bible says to put on the helmet of salvation in Ephesians 6 as part of our warfare with the enemy, you know what that means? Learn how to think like a person that's saved. Don't keep thinking like somebody who's not saved. Think like a person that's saved. And then you don't have to believe every lie of the enemy. My feelings have been saved and are in the process of being saved. But I'll tell you what, I sure don't live by my feelings anymore, nothing like what I used to a long time ago. And even my will has been saved. Not just my spirit, but my mind, my will, my emotions. And I no longer have to do just what I want to do because I want to do it, and I don't have to get angry anymore if I don't get what I want. But I can actually now want 
what God wants more than I want what I want in my life. That is wholeness and real salvation. Now, in saying that, let me say this. It's been a long time coming. 40 years, I've been a pretty serious student of the Word of God. And I would say probably 25 years ago, I started getting some pretty major breakthrough. But it took time. I'm gonna tell you something, I'm gonna be honest with you. What I say tonight is gonna help you. I believe by the grace of God that it is gonna help you. I pray that the words will be so anointed that they absolutely have to help you. But just what I say tonight is not gonna be the secret key that's gonna fix everything in your life because here's the thing, if you don't go home and do what you hear, You know, Jesus washed the disciples' feet, and he said, I've done this as an example to you. And then in John 13, 17, he said, blessed shall you be knowing these things if you do them. <laughs> if you do them. And you know, we say, well, it's just so hard. Well, that's one of the first things we need to stop saying. Don't ever say that again, it's just too hard. Because it may be hard, but God is not gonna give us anything to do that is too hard for us to do. He is the God of the impossible, and what God shows us to do, He gives us the grace and the anointing and the power to do. Everybody say, I can do it. Okay, I'm 10 minutes in and haven't even gotten to point one, so we're in trouble. Want to hear more from Joyce on this topic? We've got you covered. Visit us in the Joyce Meyer app or at JoyceMeyer.org today.